59, I think is what I said. All right, so discontinuities in rational functions. So again, a rational function is a function that's a, is written as a fraction. Denominator has to have a variable in it. So most rational functions have restricted domains leading to discontinuities, which will give us some asymptotes and whatnot. So our types of discontinuities that we can have there, we can have vertical asymptotes, right? Or which we talked about when we did the, um, the rational inequalities. Horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes, which I'm not sure if that's something that you are familiar with or not. And then point discontinuities. What's a different word for the point discontinuities? Remember what we talked about? It's a removable. Very good. So point discontinuity can be removable. Oh, let me spell it right. Removable. And um, the slant, what's a different word for slant asymptotes? No? Okay, y equals x would be an example of one. That's good. But it starts with an O. I don't know if you, I don't know if y'all, did y'all do, did you do slant asymptotes in algebra 2? Does that sound familiar to you? No? Okay. I don't think, the, I don't think that you do it in non-level algebra 2, so that's okay. Um, but another word for slant asymptote is oblique. So your oblique muscles, they're part of your abs, right? What do they allow you to do? Lean over, like slant. That's why it's called a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote. Allows you to lean. Whoops, what's happening there? Okay, so we're going to start by looking at our point discontinuities or our holes. Okay, so point discontinuities, holes in the graph, they, so they're holes, they occur when a factor containing x is common to the numerator and denominator. Okay, so when you have a factor that contains x, it can't just be a whole, it can't just be a, a constant, but if it contains x and it's common to the numerator and denominator. So what you have to do with all of these along the way for us to find all kinds of different things is we have to factor. So in the numerator, actually when I factor this one, look at the denominator first. What, what can I factor out here in the denominator? 3x. Okay, so 3x comes out. That leaves me with x minus 3, right? So the numerator is x squared. I'm going to write this as x times x, even though we wouldn't normally even write it out like that, but I want to make sure you understand what's happening here. Then I look at what's common in the numerator and denominator. This factor of x is common to this factor of x. Does that make sense to you? So we can, we can cancel that out, right? But I don't get to just cancel it out and reduce it and move on with my life. When I cancel that out, that's telling me I do have point discontinuity. So I have point discontinuity, and my point discontinuity is going to be written as an ordered pair. It's like, where is that hole that I'm going to graph? So before I cancel anything out, I have to look at what's going on right here. In your denominator, the denominator can't equal zero. You agree with that? So that means that it, x can't equal two, which we're not worried about right now. Also here, x cannot equal zero, right? X isn't going to be able to equal zero. Then we're going to cancel those out. And my reduced function is f of x equals x over 3 times x minus 2. My x value for my point discontinuity is whatever I have right here. I did just say x can't equal 0. Now I'm going to use it as an x value, but that's because it's going to be a hole, right? So that means there won't be an x there. So my x value is 0. Then i got to figure out what the y value for that point discontinuity is. I have to evaluate this function at zero. So zero over three times zero minus two. Well, if zero is in the numerator, does it even matter what's happening in the denominator? No. So what's the y value? Zero. So I have point discontinuity at zero, zero, and this is my reduced function. Okay. So what's happening is this. The function looks like this. with hole at this. Okay, so when I graph it, I'm graphing that, but then this, at 0, 0, there's going to be a hole there. I don't get to actually have a point. Okay, point discontinuity is very easy. If you can reduce anything out, you've got a point discontinuity, and you've got to make sure you know where your x value is. So that's really not a great first one to start with because we get 0, and I think that might throw things off a little bit. So let's try another one. We're going to factor this one. So what does this numerator factor into? 
Okay, x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then this is a difference of squares, so I have x plus 3 times x minus 3. So can I reduce anything out? Yes. I'm going to cancel these out, but when I do that, I can't remember before it disappears is that because of this, x cannot equal 3, right? Which means that I'm going to have point discontinuity with an x value of 3. Then my reduced function is x plus 2 over x plus 3. I evaluate f of 3, which is going to give me 3 plus 2 over 3 plus 3. So what does that give me? It's going to give me 5, 6. So it's this function that gets graphed with a hole here. Okay, everybody okay with that? Now I have other stuff going on there. There's vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. We just aren't there yet, so we're just looking at the point discontinuity here. All right, so let's try this one. What do I factor out of the numerator? 2x, and that leaves me with x minus 3 over 2x. So I can reduce this, so that means that x cannot equal what? 0. So I'm going to have point discontinuity with an x value of 0. My reduced function is just x minus 3. And then what's my y value? Negative 3. Because i got to substitute in that 0 and I get negative 3 there. Okay. So when I graph this, what is this going to look like? What is this when I graph it? What's the parent function here? It's linear, right? It's just going to be a line. Yes, very easy line to graph. So it's just going to be a line that has a hole in it. It doesn't look like a line in the original function, but it's just a line with a hole in it. That's all it is. Okay? We good with that? Any questions? Point discontinuity. You only have it if you get to cancel something out. Not everything's going to have point discontinuity in it. Okay? All right, so then let's look at vertical asymptotes. Did y'all talk about point dis discontinuity in holes last year? No? Okay. But vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, you totally did. That was totally part of that for sure. So vertical asymptotes, they occur when a factor containing x is unique to the denominator. That whole unique thing is important because if I can cancel it out and I have a hole, it's not unique, right? So I'm not going to have a hole and an asymptote in the same spot. Not going to happen. So you start like you start all of them. You try and factor and reduce if you can. Can I factor or reduce this at all? No. But I, what I know now at this point is that my denominator cannot equal 0, right? So from this, I get that x plus 2 equals 0. So x cannot equal negative 2, right? In my function, x is not going to equal negative 2, which means I have a vertical asymptote. And a vertical asymptote is what kind of thing that you draw? It's a line, right? So I have to write it as a line. So my line for my vertical asymptote is x equals what? negative 2. So you see how I wrote x can't equal negative 2, then I wrote x does equal negative 2? That's because in this function, I'm not going to have a point anywhere where an x value has a negative 2. But then I do have a line that's an asymptote. I have an asymptote here because this is true. Does that make sense to you? So this is like my domain. It can't equal 2 at negative 2, and that's why I have a line here. Okay, so make sure that whole not equals and equals makes sense to you there. We good? All right, so let's look at number two. So I'm going to factor the numerator. That factors into x plus 7 times x minus 7 over x minus 7. Can I reduce anything? Yes. yes, I can, which means when I do that, I have to keep in mind that x minus 7 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal 7, right? Does that mean I have a vertical asymptote at 7? No. Since I canceled that out, that gave me point discontinuity. And I know that we're not, it's only asking me for vertical asymptotes here, but I'll explain this in just a second. I have a point discontinuity with an x value of 7. My reduced function is f of x equals x plus 7. So here's what you have to keep in mind. 
when you reduce that out, this by itself isn't the function. This is the function with a hole here. So even though nobody asked me for this, I can't ignore it because that's part of the whole new thing, right? So if my x value is 7, what's the y value? 14. Okay. And then what I'm, what I'm being asked for are my vertical asymptotes. Do I have any? No. So it's just none. Sometimes it's none. Okay. Everybody okay with that? All right. So then let's look at number three. Let's factor that. So in the numerator, what can I factor out? Two, and then that gives me x minus four. In the denominator, this is a difference of squares, so x plus four times x minus four. These I can cancel out, so x minus four cannot equal zero, so x cannot equal four. My reduced function is f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 4. Am I going to have a vertical asymptote here? Yes, because here, now x plus 4 cannot equal 0, so x can also can't equal negative 4. Do I get two vertical asymptotes? No, because here I canceled stuff out, which means that gives me a point discontinuity with an x value of 4. This gives me a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. And then I have to find this y value, so I substitute it in there, and I'm going to get 2 over 4 plus 4, which is 1 4. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Ask me questions if you got a question. It's a line, so you have to put it as a line. If you just tell me negative 4, that doesn't make any sense. That's just a number. It is a line, so it has to be written as a line. Okay. Anything else? All right. So let's look at number 4. It's already factored for me. That's nice. So it is already factored for me. I do not have anything I can cancel out, right? But I know this x tells me that x cannot equal 0, and this tells me that x plus 5 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal negative 5. Do I have any point discontinuity? No, I just have vertical asymptote. What do I have? x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. And notice it's not x equals 0 comma negative 5 because these aren't a list of numbers I'm putting on there. These are two different lines that are written as lines. Okay. Any questions at all? All right. Flip it over. Let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. All right, so horizontal asymptotes. They occur when the degree of the denominator is greater than or equal to the degree of the numerator in a rational function. So you got three things that could happen. Top heavy, bottom heavy, tied in degree. So if you have a top-heavy function here, like we do, then it says top-heavy in degree, greater degree in the numerator would indicate no horizontal asymptotes. So if you look at this right here, this is degree 2 over degree 1. Do you understand where I'm getting my degrees from? The highest exponent. This is a 2, this is a 1, so degree 2 over degree 1. That is top-heavy, it's greater, so there is none. There is no horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote is HA. The answer would be none. On number two, I have degree three over degree two. So the numerator is greater than the denominator. So my horizontal asymptote, again, is none. Everybody okay with all that? All right, so that was pretty easy. Then we look at bottom heavy. This one's easy, too. The degree of the de denominator is greater, so bottom heavy degree in the denominator indicates horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So this is degree 1 in the denominator. What's the degree of the numerator? 0. So the degree in the denominator is greater, so that means my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. 
take no work. This is degree one over degree two. So my horizontal asymptote, the denominator is greater, so it is y equals zero. Everybody okay with that? Any questions at all? All right, awesome. So then we could have them where they are tied in degree. So tied in degree leads to a horizontal asymptote where y equals the ratio. What does ratio mean we're making? Fraction of the lead coefficients of the numerator and denominator. So this is degree 1 over degree 1. So they are tied in degree. Numerator and denominator have the same degree. So my horizontal asymptote is a y equals, and then my leading coefficients are 2 and 5, it's just 2 fifths. That's it. This is degree 2 over degree 2. So they are tied in degree. My horizontal asymptote, y equals the ratio of those leading coefficients, 2 over 2 gives you 1. And that's it. Easy enough? Questions? All right. Slant asymptotes. What's another word for slant asymptote? Oblique. So slant is also oblique. So these, my understanding is that they're new to you, right? Okay. Okay, and that's fine. But uh, that means that I'm instead of being vertical or horizontal, it's slanted. We'll go find those. They, they exist. All right, so horizontal asymptotes, I'm sorry, slant asymptotes occur when the reduced, this is important, reduced, so it's after we cancel stuff out, reduced rational function contains an x in the denominator, and the numerator is one greater in degree than the denominator. So when you look at these, I've got, this is when it's top-heavy, because when it's top-heavy, what's happening with your horizontal asymptote? You don't have one, okay? You can't have a horizontal and a slant at the same time. You can have a, oh, that's what I was going to show you this. So here's a, just a little diagram of this. Now, is this thing here a function? No. It's just like a hodgepodge of everything. It's not the best picture in the world, but it's the best one I could find. So we've got horizontal asymptotes, oblique asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. Now, you can have vertical and horizontal at the same time. That's something you've seen. You can have vertical and slant at the same time you are not going to have horizontal and slant at the same time because these talk about end behavior. So out here, you know, this, let's say that this was at like 4. I don't know what the number is there. but So as x approaches infinity, the y value is approaching 4. It's probably never going to make it, but it's approaching 4. Okay, does that make sense to you? And so that's talking about end behavior. So same thing down here. If it hugs this, or like, I guess up here, as x approaches infinity, then the y value of the function is approaching whatever the value of this line is. So you can't approach this and this at the same time. Okay, and then your vertical asymptote doesn't talk about in behavior. That's affecting your domain. Okay, but that's that's the three different ones kind of all together in a picture that you would never draw. Right, so back over here. All right, so you find these by dividing. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and factor first, though, to see if I actually cancel anything out because it's supposed to be my reduced function. So I'm going to factor in the numerator, that's going to give me x minus 3 times x minus 1. That's over x minus 2. So there's nothing I can reduce, so that is my reduced one, right? So now to find my slant asymptote, I'm going to divide. I can do long division or synthetic division on this one. What would you choose? Synthetic, me too. So I'm going to choose synthetic division. That means 2 goes on the outside. I need this form to get my numbers for synthetic division. If it's given to you factored, you're gonna have to multiply it to get that because you need this right here. So we're gonna have one, negative four, and three. So I bring down my one. Two times one is two, negative two, negative four, negative one. Okay. So I have this, but I have a remainder. You will always have a remainder. You know what you do with the remainder? You throw it away, you completely ignore it, okay? It doesn't mean anything to you. I'll show you tomorrow what it actually does mean something. It means something, but we don't use it. And there's a reason that you don't use it. And I'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. I didn't want to overload your brains today. So you just ignore the remainder. And your slant asymptote 
is a line, y equals, and then you just get what you get from right here, x minus 2. Okay, so you just get to throw away the remainder. Everybody okay with that? So let's look at number 2. You can factor in the numerator, factor out a 2x. That leaves me with x minus 2 over 2x. Can I reduce this? Yes. So when I cancel that out, this means x cannot equal 0. So what does this mean that I have? Point discontinuity. So at point discontinuity, the x value is 0. We'll come back to the rest of that in just a second. Then my reduced function is x minus 2. So what's the y value of my point discontinuity then? Negative 2. So there's that. Again, I know they didn't ask me for that, but that goes along with this once I reduce it. My slant asymptote, do I have one? No, because it has to be, the numerator has to be one greater in degree, which this is, but then this also says that you have to have an x in the denominator, so in this, ca in this case it's just none. Because when I graph this, isn't this just going to graph a line? And then it's going to have a hole in it. There we go. All right, so let's try number three. So I'm going to factor the numerator, the, if it factors, but let's just think about it this way. Let's say it factors. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But if it factors, won't it factor into two binomials? And then whatever those binomials are, will they cancel out with the 2x? No. So if that's the only reason I'm doing it, then what's the point at this? I don't, I don't even need to do that. You with me on that? I mean, I guarantee that they're not going to cancel out, so who cares? So I'm going to have to divide. Can I use synthetic division here? No, I can't, because this is not 1. This is not a binomial. So I'm going to have to do long division. 2x goes on the outside. On the inside, I have 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. So 2x goes into 2x squared how many times? x. You divide 2x squared by 2x, you get x. And it goes right here. So x times 2x is 2x squared. Change my sign on that. So that's going to zero out. And I bring down my negative 4x. So 2x goes into negative 4x minus 2 times, right? So negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Change my sign. It's going to bring down a 3. Can I divide that into 3? No. So that's going to be my remainder. What do I do with my remainder? nothing, throw it away, I don't care about it. So my slant asymptote then is just y equals x minus 2. Okay. We good with that? Any questions at all? All right, so if we look at number 4, can I factor number 4? So if you look at the numerator, that four, those four terms, the only option you have to factor it right now really is by grouping, which you can't do, or maybe we could guess and check. But the denominator, are you going to be able to fix, factor it at all? No, it's not going to factor. So I'm not going to, it's not going to factor, which means I'm not going to be able to cancel anything out at all. So I have to just go ahead and divide, right? Can I use synthetic division? No. So i got to use long division here. This is going to give me the outside x squared plus 2x minus 1 divides into 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 7. Watch carefully for zero terms that you're supposed to put in there. We don't have any here, but just pay attention. So when I divide x squared into 2x cubed, because that's all i got to look at, right? What do I get? 2x. And it goes way down here, right? 2x. So then I multiply. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 2x is plus 4x squared, and then minus 2x. And then remember, you have to change your sign. Change, change, change. So this zeroes out. Does this zero out? Nope. Negative 8x squared plus 11x minus 7. So x squared goes into negative 8x squared negative 8 times. So that's going to give me negative 8x squared minus 16x plus 8. I change my signs. 
change, change, change. He's going to give me 27x minus 15. Can I divide that in there anymore? Nope, that's my remainder, and I don't care about my remainder. So my plant asymptote is y equals 2x minus 8. And that's it. Okay, we good so far? Mm -hmm. Reduce it to what? I mean, you can write it as 2 times x minus 4 if you want to, but there's really no need at all to do that. It would be much easier to graph like this. Anything else? Alrighty. Then um, all you're going to be doing today is taking the functions right here and finding the, um, the asymptotes, the point discontinuity, those sorts of things on all of them. So go ahead and glue this in or tape this in, whatever you choose to do. Let me give you your assignment, and then we're going to talk about it real quick. All right, so this, I think I gave you enough space in here to write so that this is kind of your, you may not need to write anything, but if you need to factor, you need to divide, you can do it here. If it's not enough room, you can use another sheet of paper. But um, And then you have to find each one of these things. They won't all have everything, okay? Actually, none of them will have everything because you can't have these two things at the same time. But if it doesn't have something, you need to put none in there. Right? Don't just leave it as blank because blank tells me you don't know the answer. None tells me you know that there isn't any. Does that make sense to you? On the back, it says to graph. But, okay, we haven't graphed these. Well, we have done some of them with, with transformations, but that's not even what I want you to do back here. All I want you to do back here is graph the discontinuities. If it has a vertical asymptote and, and a horizontal asymptote, graph those two asymptotes on here. If it has a point discontinuity, plot that point, okay? That's and, and the asymptote. So whatever it has. Back here, you only have to write what it has. Like this has a you know a vertical asymptote at whatever and a horizontal asymptote at whatever. If that's the only two things it has, you write them down, you graph them. That's the only thing you have to graph on the back. Does that make sense to you? You don't have to graph the actual thing. Because when we get to actually graphing this thing, sometimes the things that people leave off are the asymptotes. Like these are important. They have to be part of your graph. So here, all I want is your discontinuity. That's it. Okay, we're good? Any questions? It should be easy, yes. You've got lots of time to work, so make a good use of your time and get started.